trust. Good morning. You don't need to stop chatting on my account. <laughs> this is what coming together in community is all about. I'm glad to see you all, especially on this Thanksgiving Sunday, capital T Thanksgiving, for all of our cultural celebrations happening on this day, however you and your family might move through this weekend. Um, just good to be together, always, but especially now. So, uh, so much to share about life and work. I want to start with a proper hello to our folks joining us online. Say how glad we are to have you here as well. And we hope that eventually, if, you know, when I step out of the way, uh, everyone can take in the beautiful Thanksgiving celebration that is here at the front, calling us um, liturgically into our worship. So thank you. I'm looking at a couple of the people who are responsible for putting all this together. I said at the 902, this is right about my speed for Thanksgiving, so I appreciate that very, very much. Um, also appreciating all that is happening in our community. We want to highlight a couple of things, I guess three in particular, three different folks who are going to come and make some brief announcements. So let's start with our Chair of Council, Carol Wilson, please and thank you. Good morning. 
On behalf of Council and the organizing team for our vision workshop last Sunday, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who attended this long-awaited event. And if you weren't able to make it out for that day, um, I'm sorry you had to miss out. Thank you as well to the planning team and to those who supported this event in so many ways. On Sunday, 54 participants brought their passion for what it means to be a church. Our professional facilitator brought the magic of drawing out a large group, organizing and synthesizing ideas, pursuing clear language where needed, and flexibility around the dynamic process of idea sharing. There was plenty of engagement, listening and collaboration, and new connections were made. Thoughtful questions were posed, norms were challenged, and many ideas were generated around living out our vision more boldly in the future. A great starting point for the development of a strategic plan by Council. In the coming weeks, you will receive a follow-up communication by email or post containing a summary of the ideas that came out of the workshop. Important conversations will continue at our Council retreat on November 4, 4th, and we look forward to sharing the outcome at a later date. Thank you again, and please stay tuned for further information. Thank you. Andy, Victoria, do you want to flip a coin? Who's next? <laughs> Final chance to put in a plug for our concert next week. The Metropolitan Silver Band will be performing at the Port Credit Campus, 151 Lakeshore Road, next Saturday at 3.30. It's the first concert of their 90th season. Tickets are $40, which include the concert and some great food catered by uh, Laura Wheeler. Wine and soft drinks will be available for purchase. It promises to be a, a great concert. A silver band, it's in the tr British tradition of a town band. It's similar to a brass band, but the instruments are, well, they're silver. Uh, there will be a variety of music, not all marches, although I'm sure there's going to be one march in there somewhere. Uh, probably some music with familiar hymn tunes and probably some arrangements written specifically for a silver band. So a silver band, neither a marching band nor a Salvation Army band, but a little of both. I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy the concert. Please tell your friends and family about the concert. We would really appreciate your support. I've heard uh, some are going to be away next weekend. If that's you, uh, and you know someone that might enjoy the concert, you might consider buying them a ticket and sending them to the concert. We do hope to provide the Metro Silver Band with a good sized audience for their kickoff concert of their 90th year, and at the same time, raise some funds for the church and for the Compass. Tickets are available from me, Leanne, Ruth, Victoria, through the church office and at the door. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and as Victoria makes her way, we just rotating door. Um, I wanted to say, repeat what I said to the, the 902 crew this morning, and that is, um, with Michael and I being away for the concert, we're missing a few things, apparently, this month. But I know, can't be in two places at once. But um, following on an idea that came through our worship committee, Michael and I are going to purchase two tickets for the concert, and then we're very happy to give them away. So if you have a neighbor, a friend, whatever that might be, and you think, I think that person would like to go, they might not buy tickets on their own, please come and see me, and whether you get them physically from me or we put their name on a list to ensure that they get in the door, I would really like to do that. So now it's your turn. <laughs> So after a very fun Saturday in Port Credit, um, we have a very special Sunday planned next week as well. Next Sunday is World Food Sunday. Um, so there are a few pieces to this. One, I hope that you've noticed our toonie tree is in the narthex. So we'll be collecting your toonies and other change and bills if you wish. We won't say no. And these donations will be going to the Canadian food grains um, to help support food insecurity across the country. And another piece to that is that next Sunday, we will be having a soup lunch after the service. So during our service, we'll be recognizing World Food Sunday. And on this Sunday, as we are so grateful for everything that we have and everything that we may be eating this weekend, it's important to remember that across Peel, 14% of households experience food insecurity on a daily basis. Um, and in the year 2022, the Compass served approximately 1,749 people each month. 
And that was last year. This year, food prices have gone up. We're all aware of that. So food insecurity um, is creeping in closer and closer. And so next Sunday, we will be joined by Options. Options Mississauga, apart from their printing services, they, um, they gosh, what don't they do? But part of their programming is they hire and train adults with intellectual disabilities um, to learn new skills in the kitchen. So Options Culinary Program will be bringing soup and fresh made rolls to us. Uh, so we invite, we invite you after the 10.30 service to come downstairs and enjoy a fresh soup and rolls lunch with us. And uh, we will be collecting just a free will donation. So whatever calls to you, whatever you can afford, we'll be collecting donations to cover the cost of soup. And any additional funds that we collect will be used to support the options um, programming that they use for our In From The Cold program. So, Last year, In From the Cold used our space at our Port Credit building um, throughout the cold winter months as a warming centre overnight from 9 p.m. until 8 or 9 in the morning. Um, those with no fixed address were able to come into our Port Credit church and, and escape the elements. And Hop Options Mississauga has been using their culinary program to provide fresh, warm, home-cooked meals for those individuals as well. So uh, lots of pieces that connect really beautifully together. That was very long, but please join us for soup after church next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you to all the many moving parts and people of this congregation who keep such good things before us, calling us to see the interconnectedness of our community, all the ways we can be together, serve together. Um, so not only am I missing the concert and the soup lunch, but I'm also missing, but I guess this is the only way you really get to hear them, I'm going to miss out on some guest preachers that we will have next Sunday, led by uh, Maura Murray Hayes, who you will remember very well, many of you, from her supply ministry here, um, and then by none other than Victoria the Sunday after that, and then by Wendy Cranston coming back on the 29th. Um, and that is, um, I'm really living into the adage of to preach, pray, and get out of the way. I'm going to have... Uh, <laughs> It's true. It's the best kind of ministry. Um, I'm going to have some study leave time, which I'll talk your ear off about once I'm back from Iona. I'm going to be in Scotland for that, uh, that whole stretch of time. But anyway, lots to come and share about that. In the meantime, I'm so grateful for a community that just ticks right along, doing good things. While I'm gone, you can still absolutely please uh, follow through on the invitation if you'd like to transfer your membership to this congregation, if that's something you've been thinking about. We never check membership at the door. We're so clear on that. But if you would like to, we're planning a service for November the 26th, anniversary Sunday, stewardship celebration, everything thrown in like a big pot of soup. And we hope that you can be part of that as well. You can contact me or Ashley by email or by phone, and we will follow up and have you ready for that. Taking a breath, as we always need to in the midst of this, I'm so mindful, especially on this Thanksgiving Sunday, of the work that we are also called to as a congregation, and specifically your council, to consider a very significant governance piece for the National Church called uh, Remit well, it's, it's a Category 3 remit, which means we're changing some, it's, we're being asked to change some of the structure of the church, specifically around the spiritual autonomy of the indigenous members of the United Church of Canada. This is a crucial, crucial conversation for us to have, and so as Council prepares for this, um, some of us attended a workshop last Thursday evening and consistently heard the importance of trust and humility in learning not just about this change but about our story and land acknowledgments that we offer in moments like this are such a big part of that that we are acknowledging and giving thanks for um, the people who have stewarded this territory long before we ever came here as settler community and so on this particular Sunday we bring you the image of the three sisters the crops that were taught by indigenous nations to settlers and were critical for survival in a land we did not know but came to try to claim uh, through this doctrine of discovery. And here we are on our Thanksgiving Sunday, 
putting things like corn and squash and beans on our table, and might we also remember the nations and the people who continue to steward and want to come alongside and teach us what it is to live with justice towards reconciliation for peace for all God's people. Will you join with me in our call to worship? We'll go back and forth with some text. I'll take the italics and invite you to take the bold. Shouts of joy, songs of praise, sounds of hope and love. We are moments of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to our God. Adonai is our God, our creator. We are God's people, led by God's love. So enter God's house, thanksgiving. Enter God's house, full of praise.
If you feel so inclined, I invite you to join me in our opening prayer that we'll share all the way through together, and then follow that with the prayer of Jesus. Let us pray. God, giver of all good, you continually pour your benefits upon us. Age after age, the living wait upon you and find that your faithfulness has no end, that your care is unfailing. We praise you that the mystery of life is a mystery of infinite goodness. We praise you for the order and constancy of nature, for the beauty and bounty of the earth, for day and night, summer and winter, seed time and harvest, for the varied gifts of loveliness which every season brings. We give you thanks for all the comfort and joy of life, for our homes, for our friends, and for all the love, sympathy, and goodwill of all people. Amen. And as children turn to a parent who loves them with deep gratitude and with true humility, we pray the words your son taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 7 to 18, and it's from the Inclusive Bible. For Yahweh your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and in the hills, a land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and where you will lack for nothing, a land where rocks are iron and copper is dug out of the hills. You will eat and have your fill and bless Yahweh your God for the good land given to you. Take care that you not forget Yahweh by failing to observe the statutes, decrees, and commands that are given to you today. When you have had plenty to eat, and have built a fine house to live in, when your flocks and herds, your silver and gold, and all your possessions increase, do not grow proud and forget God, Yahweh, who brought you out of Egypt from the land of slavery. It was Yahweh who led you through the vast and desolate wilderness, a thirsty and waterless land filled with poisonous snakes and scorpions. God made water spring forth for you out of solid rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your ancestors had never known. God humbled you to test you, and in the end, to make you prosperous. Do not say to yourself, my own strength and the power of my hands brought this wealth to me. Remember God, Yahweh, who enabled you to produce this wealth, to confirm the covenant that God swore to your ancestors, which is fulfilled today.
Thank you, thank you. I know the choir starts their music preparation weeks, sometimes months in advance. I've heard they've started Christmas preparations, actually. Um, but even so, the text of, of that anthem really speaks into the message today, so thank you so much for that. Um, I wonder, Miriam, Emily, could I get you to go back? This is totally um, off the cuff. Can you go back to the last stanza the, of the last hymn we just did? Is that easy to find? There we go. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us, most of all that love has found us, thanks be to God. It's the space in between the wonders and the truths, between the astounding and the confounding, that I'm inviting us to find ourselves today and to know that through it all, just as that line says, love has found us. Thanks be to God. There's your sermon, so I can, I can walk off the stage now, but I, I won't. I'm just... Go back to that whenever you need your summary. Let's pray. God, thank you that in the midst of all that we know and all that we do not, we can trust that you are in it with us and you do invite us to turn back and to say thank you for your unfailing accompaniment. Amen. So today I bring you a message that is arguably more art critique than theological reflection. I would argue they should be, those two things, hard to distinguish as life is interwoven, overflowing like a cornucopia with opportunities for us to think through our beliefs against the backdrop of human expression. In other words, there's always time and space for theological reflection, whether or not you know you're doing it. My point, my invitation is this, to think with me for this short little while about what it might mean for us as followers of Jesus to kind of push back very gently and humbly but faithfully and quite concertedly against the public penchant, and we are part of the public, of course, so it's not an us and them thing, a penchant for platitude. You know the kinds of phrases I mean. The ones that are dropped upon you. The, the overused, the well-meaning, but very overused phrases that are, they have come to the point of being watered down so much that they've lost their meaning and that they were, were supposed to have. And worse yet are the platitudes that really press into poor theology where we might feel obliged to kind of nod our heads in agreement because it's the path of least resistance, but then we're alone with our second thoughts and we just want to put our hands up against the world and ask maybe too politely whether that framed truth is always necessarily true. Why are we always buying into that? So in this season of Thanksgiving, when Thanksgiving is taken to new art forms and commercial profit-seeking, as is always, I admit there are pieces of seasonal art that are hauled out in our home from their usual Rubbermaid container, and they become a little more present in our home. Uh, they are borderline kitschy in their sentimentality, and some of them I should probably have tossed. <laughs> but I still hang on to them much to Michael's chagrin, I'm sure, but more now because of the internal questions that they invite for some, not all. So take, for example, this is a rendering. Ours looks a little bit different than this, but it's a decorative tile that has sat in different parts of our home for, for many years, usually year-round, for this one. And it says, there is always, always, always something to be thankful for. Now, beyond the fact that this is not the best grammar, uh, on a hard day, it might imply a call to always, always, always look on the sunny side of life. 
And I do not speak against gratitude. I do not. Don't go home and tell your friends that our minister said you shouldn't be grateful. On this day especially, I really do. But I also speak for time and space. For the self-compassionate permission to say, in particular circumstances, phrases that are more akin to, I am struggling. I am having a hard time seeing anything beyond this right now. And that is not to say there aren't always other good things to share that the good and bountiful land of God's promises is not always out there before us, like Deuteronomy says, with hope. We're not denying that. But we are saying it's okay to let ourselves be held with care when it, there are those times in life that it takes more time to adjust the head and the heart to get into the perspective where we have to hold these multiple things at once. The next platitudinal exhibit comes from the writing of W.T. Perkiser. I don't have any of his writings uh, on my bookshelves. I don't know how much we would get along theologically, but I do, I'm drawn to this one, um, the seasonal rendering of his phrase that says, Not what we say about our blessings, but how we use them, is the true measure of our thanksgiving. Not what we say about our blessings, but how we use them, is the true measure of our thanksgiving. Now, other than artistic license that I imagine has capitalized quite literally on Perkiser's use of thanksgiving in order to meld with our North American holiday, It it might feel picky to challenge this wisdom. I do not want to entirely undercut it, especially on the eve of our annual stewardship campaign. Of course, we're going to be asking ourselves how each of us can faithfully respond to God's gifts and then share them with the community for the good of the whole. So check and check. Responding to blessings, of course. The challenge for us as disciples of Jesus, in a world that so often assigns worth by how one measures up to very non-Jesus-like standards, is how much we might read words about the use of our blessings and then let them back us into a corner where our thanks and our giving feel like they are not enough. Therefore, we are not enough. And that just messes entirely with the whole point of thanksgiving. Knowing an author's intent is an endless, impossible rabbit hole, but I want, and maybe I just really need to believe, that Perkiser's intent was not to heap more guilt upon our choices, but to offer a foundation for our choices. So more akin to the call of Deuteronomy 8, how we use our blessings is a conversation for each of us to have with God on a regular basis, trusting God as the source of good. It's a private moment with public implication, but it's only and ever for God's purposes. It's not another stick to measure our worth in the world. It is an affirmation of your fundamental goodness and value as God's beloved. Full stop. To get to the last expression of thanks and giving, one that is quite devoid of platitude, I am biased to say, I want to ground us first in the good work, the good words of Luke 17, 11 to 19. And expressed here as they are in Eugene Peterson's paraphrase in the message. These are some of the quintessential verses of God's invitation for us to turn around and give thanks to our Creator. So it happened that as Jesus made his way toward Jerusalem, he crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men, all lepers, met him. They kept their distance but raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Taking a good look at them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. They went. 
and while still on their way, became clean. One of them, when he realized that he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful he couldn't thank him enough. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, were not ten healed? Where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? And then he said to him, get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. Faith can and does bring us to places where we are set onto new ways. Faith that rests in giving thanks, in saying thank you to the source, the good and loving creator, can change our daily direction, and somehow it is the act of turning itself and what we can find in that moment that can most powerfully save us again, even as an act of saving us from ourselves. And so on this weekend of many artistic displays of thanks, I bring you last and the opposite of least, a piece simply entitled Changes. It is the newest in our family collection from a friend, from a lifelong teacher named Christine White. And I shamelessly made a plug in the first service that if you would like uh, to know where her studio is and how you can visit her and her other works, please come and ask me about that. Watercolor and ink were her medium for this, and I, it is here behind me. The picture doesn't do it full justice, but it's a start for you to see it there, that you can see the layers. None are given a title, none are identified, but you know what and whom they represent in your life. They are layers above, and layers below, layers of growth and flourishing, death and loss, change after change after change. Nothing is more constant, as the adage reminds us, except for God. In the midst of it all, Jesus' invitation to turn around and say thank you is not just for public tally and, and naming for, pos for posturing or posterity. It is a transformative act to ground us more deeply in who we are and whose we are, and it's a humbling act. It is a healing act in and of itself where the turning back allows us time and space to take in the layers of our survival like our ancient spiritual ancestors standing at last in the promised land, it is an intentional pause from feasting on milk and honey just to gaze across the ground that we have covered. Always, always, always with God at our side. God is our witness. God is our companion. God is our guide. God is our strength. May this be the song we sing and the phrase that we raise, the truth that we tell today and always. Thanks be to God. Amen.
As always, this is our time to both say thank you for your ongoing generosity and to invite you to continue to make this part of your life, your lifestyle, as we do make these responses, these choices uh, as faithful followers. We have a prayer that we will share together, and then from there we will go into a video um, our Thanksgiving appeal, our being the United Church of Canada, mission and service, just giving you a bit of a glimpse into what we pray for collectively, but also where your givings extend out beyond what we can see and know. So I invite you to pray this with me together. Giver of our everything, our source of love and grace, to you belong all things, from you all things come. Today we present the fruits of our labor, the intentions of our hearts, our commitment to a justice that springs out of love. Bless this, our offering. It represents us together, one in you. Make it dance and bring laughter and joy and alleviate the needs of many. In your name, we give and we pray. This Thanksgiving, we give thanks for a church that is humble and willing to change. A church that recognizes wrongs and seeks justice. We have committed to becoming an anti-racist church. Your gifts through mission and service and the United Church of Canada Foundation help us work towards this commitment. Your, Your gifts, gifts create, create opportunities, opportunities for siblings in Christ, Christ and help, help us deepen our collective commitment to racial, to racial equity. equity. Scholarships, Scholarships, shelter, reconciliation, reconciliation healing, healing from, from trauma, trauma, and, and more. more. We can, we can all, all do more, more to dismantle, dismantle all forms of racism, racism in the church. church. We, we remember, remember our church's call to seek justice, justice and resist evil. evil. To reconcile, to reconcile and, and make, make new. new. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Amen. Thanks be to God was uh, the last text that I sent to the most recent text, I guess I should say, out to uh, a friend and a colleague. I was driving on Friday night to the hospital to be with one of our beloveds in what was coming to be her last hours. And I needed some bolstering, I suppose, and so I, I decided I would reach out to this friend and colleague who I knew had had a funeral the day before on Thursday in her community. And then she asked what was happening with me, and I said where I was headed. And she wrote back, in life, in death, in life beyond death, we are not alone. And what could I respond but say, thanks be to God. These are all, just as you've seen in this video, these are short clips from our United Church Creed, but they are, are everything when we really struggle for words to say that we are not alone. We have community all around us. And so I was ever so grateful to have that carrying me into what was to be my last visit with Margaret Elmerson, who died early this morning. Uh, I had had her on my list of prayers. I had some first names I wanted to bring to you, and I still do. You know I'm very cautious about sharing too much and too freely, um, certainly with YouTube, and who knows where this goes from here, but I certainly still lift up these names, invite you to hold in your prayers, Liz and Margaret, and then another Margaret and Edith, and I know there are many names on your personal list as well. But especially now, I invite you to add the names of Margaret's family, her daughter, Elena, her son-in-law, Stephen, and their boys, Malcolm and Alexander, 
as they wrestle with another loss in their family. And I said to um, the folks earlier this morning that it feels, I don't know how to describe it even yet. Margaret and I, in some of our visits through this last summer, talked about Scotland so often, as was her home before she came to Canada, um, and the thin place that I will be visiting when I go to Iona on Thursday. And just that continuity of me going back to that place as she has now gone back through the thin place to her eternal home. And um, hmm, all the ways that God is at work in life and death and in life beyond death. As memorial service arrangements become clear, we will share them with you. But your prayers can be unabated. Please also, also hold, I wish there were enough space for the names of the people of Israel and the Gaza Strip and Lebanon. Unimaginable to live and be in that terror for all God's people. The prayer we have before us for our prayers for ourselves and others is also has a responsive line, and I invite you to say it with all the conviction you can muster on this day. Your response will be each time, we know this. It's a prayer by Olivia Smith. We know that there is more than enough for all, enough food, enough shelter, enough love, enough resources, and yet there are too many people without. We know that we have fallen short on our promises to love, to share, to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We know that God's reign will come when we are all loved and accepted, when we all have what we need to thrive, when we are all free to dance and party in community. We know that there is much work to do to bring about your reign, and we know that we will not be left to do it alone. We know that you, God, are always with us. Your Son is always beside us, and the Spirit is always guiding us. We know that as long as we follow in the way that you are leading,
welcome to be seated. This is going to take a minute. <laughs> I won't keep you forever, I promise. Um, first, an invitation that is part of your ongoing Thanksgiving that you would um, take a piece of mail from me that is, well, all yours. This is the one that I have that was given to me that inspired this. And then I have a basket full of blanks in all the uh, editions that you see there before you. Um, the student minister I supervise, Jane Baxter, she gave this to me a couple weeks ago, and so of course I leave it on my desk. So grateful for you. And then she wrote me a lovely note on the back, put my name. She didn't have to mail it, but she, you know, put it across the table. And I'd love for you to do the same for people in your life who need to know that they are not alone in whatever way, shape, or form you need to say that to them. Um, and so this is a basket full that I'm going to go that way to catch people who are not going out to coffee hour. But there is a basket right here as well um, that maybe somebody from the choir will kind of stand and hold as you go out that way. Please take one or two or three or whatever you need. I bought so many, it's ridiculous, because they'll never go out of style. And I just, I would love for you to take these and continue to spread the gratitude, but above all, the companionship and the love. All it's going to cost you is a stamp if you need to put it in the mail. Maybe you just give it to your neighbor. Other piece of um, mail sort of in the basket is what's going to be posted on my door as of, uh, well, later this week. A reminder of what's been going out in the e-blast about my time away. Study leave. Um, I'll be back in the office on the 1st of November. I will regale you with stories of that travel no doubt, but you can find me on Iona from the 14th through the 20th, and then out in East Lothian, east of Edinburgh. Um, lots of reconnecting, lots of renewing, lots of study, and in the meantime, this is what's most important for me to know, to be going away that distance, that you will be held in care. If anything ar arises for you, need of pastoral care, please reach out to my friend and colleague, the Reverend Deborah McGill of St. Stephen's on the Hill United Church, and she will take excellent care of you all along the way. There is a blessing that if you feel inclined one last time to lift your voices with mine, let us offer this together. When I wake up each day, let gratitude stir and strengthen me, O oh God. Let it draw me to goodness and hold me there, there where your spirit sings, Go, define love today, and my heart chooses to rise to the occasion. Amen.